You excited? Oh, come on. You're running. Look how cool this is. This is like, only like John Rahm goes in, right? You know, like big VIPs and little Fred and Hannah on the Golf Chick <laughs> channel. Golf Tech channel, sorry. Guy, too excited nah. to even speak. I, let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Hannah Gregg, professional golfer and golf tech ambassador. And today we are here at the Ely Callaway Performance Center. We're gonna try out basically all of the new gear from this year. And this guy right here is gonna show us around. So can you tell us what we're gonna see today? Yeah, we're gonna look at all the cool new stuff. So we've got the Paradigm Lime out this, uh, this year. This is the new stuff that we're working with. We're gonna watch you and Fred hit the, the new drivers, the new uh, irons. We're gonna watch some hybrids, some fairy woods. We're gonna look at all the good stuff. We typically work with all the uh, all our tour staff down here at the Ely Calgary Performance Center. So we have a blast doing it and we're excited about having you guys here to, to hit the clubs and give us some feedback. And we're gonna try to find some clubs that work work well for you. And I think we will because the technology uh, that we've designed into these this new product line mm -hmm. is the best we've ever done. So we think we'll uh, watch some good shots from you guys and we'll have a good time putting them in your hands and watching the ball fly. Yay, we're so excited. We, as you guys know, did, went to the Callaway Paradigm launch earlier this year and got kind of a sneak peek at the drivers and we were really impressed. So I'm excited, let's get right into it. All right, so I'm gonna start with the new irons here. And tell me a little bit about them because I've seen, I saw a post recently on Instagram mm -hmm. on the European tour, this set of iron has won like every event. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really popular among our tour staff. And the nice thing about an iron like that is what a pro is looking for is a couple of things. There's subject, subjective things they like. Obviously, they, they want the, the, the iron to look right and feel right. Mm -hmm. So we worked on making sure the shape was correct, the size, the envelope was, the, was what a, pro, a tour pro would want to look at. But the looks are only part of it. I mean, the looks give you confidence when you set the blade up and you're about to swing it. But when you swing it, you make contact with the ball. You want the ball to fly through a certain trajectory window. You want to have a certain efficiency. You want to be, a, and for a player at your level and the tour staff that I work with, they're going to want to have the club that's versatile where they can hit different shots with it and they yeah. can, can work the ball different directions and change the, the trajectory on command. And so in order to do that, what you want an iron is you want an iron that's small and compact enough to be versatile. It gets through the rough, doesn't have a lot of drag but big enough so that you can distribute the mass in a way that makes it a little bit forgiving. Because mm -hmm. even as a guy, a guy as good as you is not going to hit it exactly perfect every single time. So what you want is you want the ball going through that same trajectory window every single time with the same ball speed. So if we can make an iron look good, the right size to be versatile, but still forgiving enough to give you a ball, the, a constant ball speed if you missed it a little bit, yeah. that's really the key for a better player's iron. I like that just visually from on top. It doesn't have much offset. The face is in between, like small and big. It's right where you probably want to no see it. There's no abrupt change to the yeah. lines when your when your eyes follow the line of the head. We don't. We want everything to be very subtle. Yeah. Right. And that's for sure where it is. Oh well, that's a good start. Dead straight. If anything, maybe a little bit thin, but pretty good. Is that kind of the numbers you want? Just pretty much 6,000? Yeah, so you happen to be, I mean, so you obviously do a really good job of making my club look good because you yeah. deliver good angles at speed. Yeah. So that always helps the equation. But even given that, you still have to have the ball take off and perform a certain level of parameters in terms of the launch window that you're looking for and the ball speed. And so there, you, you basically swung 94 miles an hour. That would be essentially right in the middle of the bell curve for tour average. The ball speed, on a good solid hit for you is gonna be around 130 or so. So you're 130.9, so it was a good solid strike. Yeah. So not only does it tell me that the club's efficient, it tells me that you made good contact so that I can then look at the launch and spin and determine whether that's correct. If someone miss hits it or they duck hook it or they block it off to the right, that's giving me a launch and spin number that it's artificially high or low, not what they're really gonna produce with a good swing. Yeah. So because you hit that straight, I can look at the launch window, which is 14.2 at 5909. And again, you're right, you happen to be right at the tour average, yeah. which couldn't be too bad, right? No. It shouldn't be too bad, right? No, I think you can play now with that. Now the only question is why I'm not, not on tour, right? Yeah, that was I was headed that direction. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's do one more. It's a pretty good one again. Here's another, it's, I'm glad you hit that shot because you hit yeah. that a little bit low on the face. Yeah. So it launched a little bit lower and spun a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But again, the nice thing is even though it was only like a groove down, Slight miss hit, it still, it takes off a little bit lower and climbs to a slightly higher peak, but it kind of hits the same window each time. Yeah. So that's where you have to hit that, an iron like that, a tour blade, 
relatively solid to get good efficiency out of it, but it still allows you a little bit of room. Like if you had, hit, had missed it uh, low on the face like you did that one and it was an old school muscle back, yeah. you probably had would have gotten a more dramatic result or change in the trajectory window or the ball speed. But there, the ball speed hung in there right at 130.7, the spin only went to 6,500, and the launch dropped a degree, so you're still in good shape. What do you say, like, what type of player would get fitted into this type of iron? Well, one thing I like to explain to even my high handicap amateurs is I don't necessarily mind if a high handicapper wants a better player's golf club, but what I try to explain to them, these are the trade-offs you're going to make. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that tour irons do well, right? They're smaller so that they get through the rough better. You can dig them out of holes. They look prettier typically. They give you better feedback, which is a nice way of saying they hurt when you miss hit them. They vibrate more. <laughs> as long as a, an amateur is prepared for that, I tell them, look, that's all good stuff from a, a playability, from a playability standpoint. What you can't do is wing that thing an inch toward the toe. It's just not gonna like it. And you're gonna pay, instead of, if you do that on a game improvement iron, if you hit it out toward the toe on a game improvement iron, maybe you lose three or four or five yards in the carry, but it's still on the green and carry the, carry the green side bunker. Yeah. This thing, you're gonna lose 15 yards if you hit it on the toe like that, right? Mm -hmm. So you just pay a bigger price for mishitting it. And if like a 10 handicap or an eight handicap is like, but I love the blades. That's like, you can have the blades. I'll fit you into the right specs with the shaft and everything with the blades. Yeah. Just understand there's certain benefits to it, but there's a trade-off you're gonna make. And then sometimes a better player, like a, a, a scratch amateur will come in and say, hey, you know what? I played blades all my life. I'm just ready for some tech in my life. I'm sick of looking at a little scalpel down there that I feel like I get to hit dead pure every single time. Yeah. So can you give me something that doesn't look like a shovel, but it's a little bit more tech and a little more, you know, a little more health essentially. Yeah. And so you give them an iron that maybe it's like our, our new paradigm, yeah. which looks like a nice golf club, but the envelope's expanded slightly. We use, this, it's forged still. We use multi-materials. It's got a, a fast springy face on it. It's got more efficient inertia distributed. It's got it's a higher inertia because the, the weight is distributed more effectively around the club. We have been messing around here and this is definitely the best fit for me, but yep. Yep. we got the paradigm here too. And we're obviously gonna give that a go. So you mentioned this is obviously gonna be, you know, you're gonna lack some of the stuff you get from the, mm -hmm. the player iron, but you're gonna gain some other benefits. So what what would you say would be beneficial? Or why would people put this into play? Well, the reason that this iron is important is because Fitting a guy like you into this, yeah. you're the 1% of the 1%, yep. right? And so we want to sell more than 1%. We want to sell <laughs> the entire golfing population, clubs that are fun to play with. Yeah. And like you and I discussed earlier, the game's already hard, so let's not make it harder. Mm -hmm. You have the ability and the training, you're a tour player, so you can handle an iron like this and get the most out of it, right? You can access all the implements of this design that's gonna help your game. But a lot of amateurs, even very good amateurs, need a little bit more help in the tech. And so what this iron does is, you can look down and go, wow, this still looks like a nice golf club. It doesn't look like the thing is shouting out, hey, I'm trying to give you a lot of help. Like you need a lot of help. Thank God I'm here, break glass in case of emergency. Yeah. Like this is still a golf club that looks good. It's forged material. Internally, it's got vibration dampening material. So it doesn't, sound or feel clacky or ringy. It feels kind of like a forged golf club. Cool. But internally, we're much more sophisticated with the distribution of the weight. And also the face is actually moving now. It's got a face cup on it, so the ball speed's much higher. Now again, the trade-off you make is that off the rack, this iron's gonna come stronger lofted. And usually when you have a faster springier face, it has the, it, not only does it increase the ball speed, but it tends to drop the spin a little bit. And so when it does that, the ball comes off hotter. Now for most amateurs, especially amateurs that don't have your perfect angle of attack into the ball, they kind of scoop it up in the air off the ground. When they launch it high like that, what you want is an iron that's relatively low spin for two reasons. It makes it go farther, that, that part's nice. Mm -hmm. But the other part too is the less spin means less curve, so it goes straighter, okay. so straighter and farther. For someone that doesn't have your skill, having a ball that goes straighter and farther is beneficial. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it a go at least. Okay. It's yeah. actually really pretty. Yeah, you'll pretty be you'll be pleasantly big iron. Yeah. you'll be pleasantly surprised by the feel of the golf club. Yeah. But you'll probably hit it a million miles, which <laughs> is going to be out of the realm of what you'd want for your iron game. Okay. <laughs> Wow, I hit that so good though. Okay, so this is a, again, you have the skill to be able to like a robot produce it so that we can see very clearly the difference between the, the numbers. Yeah. And so typically your number would have been on a solid strike on a tour blade for you, you would have the ball leaving about 130 miles an hour. Yeah. There, just one swing without even trying, it jumps to 139. Right, so the ball speed, and it's not like you miss hit the other one. You no, hit the other one solid. Good. You hit this one solid, it's nine miles an hour faster. And let's also bring up the fact that that's a six iron and this is a seven iron. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that's another thing we can mention is that now, now I would add something to that is that because it's a stronger lofted, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like a six iron. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like a six iron. It's like a blade six iron, right? Yeah. So the lofts are probably relatively comparable. Like this is a 30 degree loft, that one was probably about 30 degrees, 29 to 30, right? Mm -hmm. 
So from the angle impact with the ball, we have pretty similar dynamics, but you can see how the spin rate drops, right? Mm -hmm. So the spin rate drops, launch angle comes down a little bit, ball speed goes up, and instead of you know 185 or 190, it's 202 on the Two. carry. Yeah. So you add 15 yards in a heartbeat, right? Which is farther than you'd want to hit a seven iron. Yeah. Okay. And then when you drop the spin rate, you're losing some workability. The other thing that happens, and this is very important for a player at your level, is that when the, instead of the flight climbing to, like taking the spin, climbing to a peak, and then it comes out and comes vertical with a dis nice descent angle to the green, it starts to look a little more like a rainbow, especially hitting it as hard as you do. So when it comes in shallow, all right, it's gonna skip across the green. You're not gonna be able to control how it reacts when it hits the green. Whereas that, that kind of behavior and paying attention to that kind of behavior is a very advanced way to play golf, which is something you're gonna pay attention to, but the average amateur is not gonna be as concerned about what they're more concerned about is carrying over the greenside bunker and hitting the seven and farther than they've ever hit in their life and straighter. I gotta, I gotta say though that for being like a player improvement iron, that felt really good off the face. Yeah. It wasn't that clanky kind of like hybrid feel that you get from some of the player improvement iron. That felt phenomenal. Okay, now it's my turn. So I have tested out the driver previously and the three wood, but I'm excited today because I get to hit basically everything. And one thing that I'm most excited about is this utility wood. So Garrett is here. He's going to show us what this is. It's a new club. Tell us what we need to know. Yeah, this is a club that's starting to get a little bit of a cult following for us at Callaway. Um, we call it a utility wood. It's got some part hybrid to it and some part fairway wood to it. Um, the lowest loft hybrid for a lot of players leaves something to be desired. A lot of players hit them too low nowadays um, and they're trying to hit that club into greens. So then they try a fairway wood, whether it's a five wood or seven wood. Sometimes those work out great. Other times players feel like they either go too high Sometimes they hook a little bit. So we developed this club to kind of address that spot. So it goes a little higher uh, than your lowest lofted hybrid might go, plus a little farther. Not as easy to draw as a fairway would. Cool, so this is something, if you have like a four or three hybrid and it's not stopping fast enough, you would put them in this? You would want to try this as an alternative if you didn't want to go directly to a fairway wood. See it. So Beautiful. good. And that's gonna stop, like if you have a long par four or something. That's gonna stop quicker than that four hybrid did. Totally. You know, which is about the same loft. They're both a 21 degree club. Uh, this one has about an inch, uh, almost an inch longer shaft length to it. So you swing it a little oh, okay. faster because of that. It's a little lighter head, slightly larger head size. And you get the kind of the trajectory that you kind of want yeah. a seven wood for without uh, looking at a seven wood in your case, or yeah, some players nice feel like looking. they're gonna hook a seven wood. Look at that, that's not, it's, it almost just looks like a hybrid, but with a little extra behind it. Carried 180 yards with some spin. Yeah, you see you got the spin up to mm -hmm. 4,000. Uh, not see? pictured here, but the four hybrid was like 3,700 yeah. and it launched a little lower. Rolled out pretty good and some players with the four hybrid, if they're not hitting it into greens, they mm -hmm. might prefer the lower trajectory. Yeah. If it's a tee shot club or a layup club, but if you're going at greens, you want to have enough spin and enough launch to you know, hold the green at the same time as having enough speed on it to go the right distance relative to your other clubs Sick. for gaps. Cool. All right, so the new Paradigm driver line. Yep. Uh, obviously, I feel like every tour player has played a Paradigm driver that has won. The yeah. latest, obviously. Yep. Our boy that wins the Masters, John Drum. Yep. He's using the Triple Diamond, I'm guessing. Yep. Yes, sir. Please tell us a little bit about the different models and the who, model lineup who and the differences. Should fit into who? Yeah. who should do what? Who should do what? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, certainly, you know, everyone gets excited and we're, we're super excited when I see anyone on our staff do well and play well with the clubs that we've designed for them. So it's always really rewarding to see everything play out, all your hard work and especially the engineers that have, have worked so hard for a year to try to design the driver. All that stuff comes to fruition when you see a player on TV winning a big tournament like that. So that's really rewarding for all of us here at Callaway Golf. But it doesn't mean that Mr. Havenkamp should go out and buy John Drom, John Rom's driver setup, right? Because the driver, as any golf club in your bag, should be set up for your particular game. And that's why we like to offer different models. So the three models are the Triple Diamond, which would be one that would be in John Rom's bag. This, this club, really, if you ask most tour players, they almost have PTSD from growing up and hitting hooks. So no one ever wants to see the ball go left. So it's very common Same. for a tour pro to walk up and say, look, I can draw it if I need to, but I don't want to make a natural swing without thinking about and have that ball move left. And so as a result of that, what they're trying to do, the holy grail on tour is kind of the knuckle cut. 
Now, some guys probably chase that shot more than they need to, but the idea is to set up left, center, and bang away and never worry about the thing going left. Mm -hmm. Well, this driver is very much set up that way. It's got a, more, a smaller head. It's a little bit less forgiving because it has the smaller head. It's got a more open face. It's got a more toward center of gravity. And it's designed to move the ball neutral or a little bit left to right without the spin rate coming up. Because that's what happens when you open the face to hit a cut. You usually add a little bit of spin back in. So we go to a lot of links. We use the depth of the club and the weight distribution internally to try to move the center of gravity further forward toward the leading edge, but still have it inertially very stable. But when you get the weight more forward and low, it allows you to hit the ball left to right and have the backspin rate stay very low. Yeah. So tour players love that, all right? But a guy that's already hitting a slice into the parking lot to the right of the... <laughs> parking lot is not gonna it's not gonna like that a lot right and so he doesn't need any help hitting a fade so there's two other models so the other extreme into the spectrum would be the paradigm x okay so the paradigm x now you can see it's longer from front to back it's got a bigger footprint when you look down on it so pros typically are going to want to see a fairly compact footprint and a little bit taller volume like vertically yep. and the overall cubic centimeters of volume is smaller anyway okay? okay now this one you have the volume it's a much bigger golf club and you have the volume pushed down and spread out because it gives it more inertia here on the toe to the heel orientation right internally it's a lot different so you're going to put the center of gravity more center to toward on a club like this and you're going to move the center of gravity much more toward the heel because what happens with the driver as you know is when you hit on the toe it tends to hook and when you hit on the heel it tends to cut and that's called gear effect so what happens when you move the weight internally toward the heel, the center of gravity toward the heel, you're also moving the sweet spot toward the heel, and that means more of the club face is playing like a toe strike, which for a guy that slices it off the neck, Perfect. he's gonna pick up ball speed because the sweet spot's closer to his impact location, and he's gonna have less fade spin on the ball. Now, but this has a pretty significant amount of draw bias. So if someone was fairly neutral and didn't wanna see it hook or fade too much, this might be too much help, trying to help, help the ball turn to the, from right to left. It also typically has a little bit more backspin than a club like that, because it's designed to help people get the ball up in the air and keep it in the air while trying to curve left or less to the right. Yeah. So, so those are the extreme end of the spectrum, and you kind of know who you are when you're watching this. If yeah. you're living in Oscar Bravo right of the fairway, then Mr. X is gonna be the way to go. And if you swing it like this guy, then you're probably gonna take a look at the triple diamond. Now, for most people out there, they're probably gonna like this one a lot because this is the standard paradigm. It's very neutral, baseline is zero, center gravity in the center of the head, sweet spot in the center of the face, has a very square face, has an, the volume is very equalized. It's not really tall or really wide, so it's kind of equally distributed. And the nice thing about this one too, which covers an, either, either, uh, an even wider range of people, is that it, this one actually has a slide weight on the back. And this is moving that center of gravity back and forth across the head. Just like we talked about, these are kind of preset. With the X, you have the center of gravity internally more heelward. With the, the, the triple diamond, you have it more toeward. So those are set with a certain bias. And this one is neutral, and then the adjustment, the sliding weight here, allows you to move the center of gravity back and forth. So if you want to fine tune a little bit of cut into it, or a little bit of draw into it, you could do it right with your wrench. And also you have the hosel adjustments as well. What I'm going to say is that my, obviously, the fitters at Golf Tech, they have said that this is definitely one of the more forgiving drivers on the market. Yeah. So if you need more accuracy, but still, obviously, plenty of distance, this is a great alternative for most players too, right? Well, you and I had this discussion earlier, is that at some point, all the companies, because all the companies make great stuff, and we have to work really hard to compete against these guys, Ping, TaylorMade, Titleist, they all make great stuff, and we make great stuff. And so we have to stay on our game to make clubs better, and we think we do. We think our clubs are the best, but we have to work hard to do it. But all of us are very close to the limit of the ball speed you can, you can allow off the center of the face. So yeah. if you strike it in the center of the face, obviously the rules-making bodies have said the ball can only move so fast. We're all really close to that. So what do you then do? What are your options when you have the, ball, with the, the driver maxed out on a center hit, you have it maxed out ball speed? Well, you start saying, okay, what really makes a difference? Is it one more mile an hour ball speed? Or is it when you miss hit it slightly, maintaining that ball speed and maintaining that trajectory window? One thing that's really, really severe in drivers is that when you hit a little toe or a little heel or a little bit low on the face or a little bit on the top of the club, the club is experiencing all these gear effects. It's rotating, and so it's changing the launch spin and the speed's dropping. So it's going through a different trajectory window every time, and the ball speed's dropping every time you miss it from the center. And so it's already difficult to hit it long and straight as it is, and when you have just slight miss hits on drivers, starting to move around a lot, spin more or less, curve a lot, and then the ball speed's dropping down, what you're then trying to do is you're trying to make the effective hitting area more efficient across the face. So instead of maybe the effective hitting area being the size of a quarter, yeah. maybe we make it the size of a half dollar. All right, well, obviously, the triple diamond is probably the one for me then, so we're going to see yeah. here if I can yep. hit that John Rom little bleeder. Yeah, baby, baby fade baby, with the right spin rate. knuckle fade, you said? Knuckle fade. Knuckle fade, all right, let's the see. The holy it. grail. The holy grail. 
I completely healed that, but we can see anyway. Yeah, it was actually a perfect example because <laughs> your current driver that you were hitting before out of the center of the face was spinning at 2800. Wow. So that was low heel, which is gonna rev the spin up the most and it only goes to 2700. Look at this here, babe, down here. You can see here, I hit that way low in the heel and the spin value was still only 2700 and it went they carried three, almost 300 yards total. You couldn't have done that any more perfect for yeah. my presentation because that's what I'm talking about with the paradigm is yeah. that you can, you can make a miscue like that and still kind of get away with it. Yeah. Like even a few years ago, a little low on the hill, 4,500 spin, yeah. would have gone 262. 100%. Or so at 296. See if I can hit a solid one here for everyone. That's pretty there. All right. Yeah, that's pretty much right out of the manual. 2.8, 2600, 172 ball speed, carried 295, rolled to 311, efficiency 1.51. So 1.51 is right at the limit. Right at, yeah. I'm gonna hit one really hard once because we have yeah. to do that flex in front of the camera, you yeah. know, see how what it got. Oh, yeah. Right. Wow. Oh, he almost cracked the 180 ball speed limit, 178.6. Right. Okay. 2200. 151, caught it nice and solid. 315 in the air, 331 total. So that's pretty impressive numbers because I only, but I, I do normally swing it faster than that, but with that total distance, that's insane from 118 miles per hour. I mean, yeah, you see this every time, but, but yeah, I love it. Yeah, at your club head speed, it's hard not to like compress and deform the ball a lot, and it's easy to lose a lot of energy in that, and you still got 1.51 on the transfer to the ball speed, so you yeah. almost got 180 ball speed on that. And you went through a really nice trajectory window. You had 10.7 at 2275, yeah. so that's that's the, definitely the recipe for hitting the ball long. How was today, huh? This was such a sneaky, cool experience. Like, this, this was like how tour players test out the new gear. It was so freaking cool. They showed us all these different things you can try. And those guys were so knowledgeable. It was really cool. All right, that was a super cool visit at Callaway. And right now I'm at my local golf tech location, hitting the Paradigm Triple Diamond. Got my golf tech coach right here, my guy. And look at these numbers. Tell us all about it. So getting the backspin for you to around 2,000, 2,200s, pretty optimal for you. Getting that launch angle around the 12, 13 range, and then just keeping the descent angle from getting up too high, especially with the type of ball speeds that you have. Yeah. That's really just gonna help you start to hit the golf ball a lot farther and just optimize how, uh, how a lot. Far that's go. 330 right there. Yeah, 330. Do we need one of that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this video. The Callaway Paradigm drivers are the real deal, but make sure you get fitted. See you in the next one.